So the first thing we're going to do is talk about Ag Week. Uh, March 20th through the 26th is National Ag Week. So in a few minutes here, I'll be doing a proclamation with regard to Ag Week here in Nebraska. And obviously, this is particularly important for us as we are an agricultural state. Agriculture is our number one industry. It's the heart and soul of what we do. It's about one in four jobs in Nebraska is tied to agriculture, and it's about 20% of our overall state economy. And last year, we saw that ag exports were just through the roof. It was a phenomenal year. In fact, we set a record uh, for beef exports from Nebraska, $1.81 billion in beef exports. That was 40% higher than 2020 and 25% higher than the previous high year, which was uh, 2018. So great year for beef exports, but it was also a great year for corn and soybeans as well. So we don't have Nebraska-specific numbers for those exports, but uh, nationally, corn exports from the United States were up 102 percent last year, and soybean exports were up 8 percent. In fact, those corn exports, we had more corn exported in 2021 than 2020 and 2019 combined. So a fantastic year for corn exports. And here in the state of Nebraska, we do know that we produce a record 1.85 billion bushels of, uh, yeah, 1.85 billion bushels of corn and 351 million bushels of soybeans. So records for both of those. And uh, sorghum, for example, also had a great year. Uh, sorghum was up 45%, 19.8 million bushels. So that is all tremendous success, and we want to continue to build upon that as we go into 2022. And in fact, USDA is predicting that 2022 will be an even bigger year for ag exports. So that's all wonderful. Now, that success, however, is only made possible because of all the people that contribute to that success in agriculture. And while oftentimes when we think about agriculture, we think about our farmers or ranchers, specifically in production agriculture, there's a whole host of other careers and uh, available in agricultural and natural uh, resources that contribute to that success in agriculture. So if you think about it, all the other folks that go into it, whether it's in the field of manufacturing or science or, uh, you know, you name it, uh, you know, different career fields such as being a microbiologist or an entomologist or uh, an ag aviator or a diesel mechanic or a machinist or a welder, or a, a, a elevator operator, a veterinarian, a butcher. I mean, just think about all the different careers that are available that are related to agriculture, that are part of what keeps our uh, state going. One of the great groups that we have that helps train those young people is FFA. In fact, FFA now has over 11,000 members and over 200 chapters. And a lot of the number of the guests we have up here today are helping not only with agriculture, but with promoting FFA, in fact, scholarships and so forth. So uh, we do have some speakers that are going to be talking about agriculture here today that uh, help us with all this great success. Uh, first of all, we got, well, first of all, we got uh, Steve Wellman, who's the Director for Agriculture in the State of Nebraska. He is actually not speaking today. Um, <laughs> that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. I did here in Nebraska earlier. He did Pure Nebraska earlier today, so Steve's getting still opportunities. But we got Mark McGarg, Mark McCarg, who is the president of the Nebraska uh, Farm Bureau. We have Andy Jobman, who's the president for the Corn Grower Association. Uh, well, Stephanie, we're going to get to you in just a second, but I'm going to skip over you for a moment to get to Ken Hers, who's uh, president for the Nebraska Cattlemen. And then uh, uh, we've got uh, Stephanie Beasley, because she is our uh, director for, uh, for the uh, DHHS, Department of Health and Human Services, Children and Family Services, and we're going to be talking uh, with Stephanie a little bit later about Social Worker Month, so we'll get to that in just a minute. But uh, we've got some great guests here talking about agriculture. Uh, we continue to see strong investments in agriculture here in our state. So, for example, last November, school announced that they were going to expand their facility in Seward and investing $75 million there to create 80 more jobs. In December, Sustainable Beef in North Platte got their permits to start moving forward. That facility will create about 875 jobs. Then in January, we had AGP announce that they're going to be investing in a uh, facility, a soybean processing facility in David City. That will handle about 50 million bushels. 
And then we also have um, Norfolk Crush in Norfolk, obviously, that is investing about $375 million to create a uh, soybean processing facility that will be able to process about 38.5 million bushels of soybeans. And then uh, we also, I want to give a shout out to Preferred Popcorn. They uh, created a 123,000 square foot uh, facility in Waco that started production this month. So all these exciting investments to be able to uh, have happen here and continue to grow agriculture in Nebraska. So that's our first thing. And then we'll, after we're done with the Ag Week stuff, I'm going to have uh, some of our guests speak on that. We're going to switch to uh, the Social Worker Month. And then what we'll do is we'll wrap up with Q&A on those topics and other topics after we get done with all that. So to start with, though, I'm going to turn over to Mark McCarg, again, President of the Nebraska Farm Bureau, who's going to talk a little bit more about why Ag Week is so important here in Nebraska. Oh, but I'm sorry, I should, I should mention that as part of Ag Week, I'm also going to be doing tours on Tuesday and Friday, hitting a variety of different facilities to highlight the great ag companies we have here in Nebraska. So with that, Mark, I'm going to turn right. it over to you. Thank you, Governor. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, yeah, Mark McCarg, President of the Nebraska Farm Bureau, and we are really excited that it's National Ag Week. Uh, being an ag producer myself, a fourth generation in Merritt County, it's just exciting that we're setting aside a whole week, both, na both nationally and in Nebraska, to celebrate uh, what agriculture brings to the state. So to do that, as you can see, I'm not, I don't have a jacket on. That wasn't by accident. I didn't wake up this morning and just happened to look at my calendar. Oh, you know, I <laughs> missed, missed my schedule. Uh, our, uh, our Nebraska Foundation is spending a whole week of celebrating ag and helping educate uh, both Nebraska and nationally about the value of agriculture. And so to help do that, they've developed these t-shirts. It talks about uh, growing food, growing Nebraska, and we have a special t-shirt for uh, the governor Thanks and so uh, Steve Wellman. And so kind of the strategy behind this is that we've challenged uh, uh, we've sold about 500 of these t-shirts. And so the goal this week is for those that have the t-shirts that are involved in agriculture to some degree to take a picture of them and talk about some way that they're involved in agriculture, post that on social media so that we can get a, we can get a, get a big blitz and help, help everyone understand the different aspects of agriculture. So the governor did a nice job of actually talking about all the different segments that can be involved in agriculture that you wouldn't think of. So we expect uh, people to be wearing, you know, for instance, if the governor wore the t-shirt, how would the governor be representing agriculture? Well, he's the governor of the state with the third largest ag receipts right. in the country. I mean, so just that alone, uh, Steve Wellman, uh, you know, might be farming some this week. I don't know what your schedule is, but you know, uh, Steve's obviously involved in, in agriculture, owns a farming operation, and so we're just asking people to do that to spread the word. So I'm going to talk about just a little bit uh, to connect, how does that actually grow Nebraska? If we grow food and agriculture grows, how, do that, how does that grow Nebraska? Again, the governor did a nice job of talking about all the different uh, groups that are investing in Nebraska, our different uh, value-added preferred popcorn and the soybean crush that's coming in. All that can only happen when we have a strong ag base to start with. So if we didn't have a strong ag base, those types of companies would not be coming in and actually siting in Nebraska, developing jobs, and so on and so forth. But on the farm, if you want to take it just on the farm, when, when agriculture on the farm does well, when my farm does well, I grow hogs, corn, popcorn, uh, when that does well, I, I invest more in uh, different supplies for my farm. I may upgrade machinery. When I do that, I spend that extra money at a local operation, maybe our equipment manufacturer or dealer uh, in bomb guards in town or wherever it is. They in turn have the ability then to hire more people in those businesses. Those people ultimately uh, buy houses, they move into town, all that grows. And so, so that's how just starting on the farm level in Nebraska, if we can make sure that we have good profitability within the farm sector, that in turn just rolls throughout the economy and ultimately allows us to grow Nebraska, bring these companies in that in turn help uh, just move this cycle along. So thank you again for being here. I appreciate it. I'm going to turn it over to Andy Jobman with the uh, corn growers and 
He's going to talk a little bit about, uh, I don't know what, corn maybe. Probably. <laughs> well, thanks, Mark. Uh, yeah, like Mark said, my name is Andy Jobman, and I serve as uh, president of the Nebraska Corn Growers Association. I'm a fifth generation ag producer from Gothenburg, Nebraska. I farm there with my younger brother and my dad. We raise white and yellow food grade corn for Frito-Lay, soybeans, alfalfa, and also cow-calf. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Governor Ricketts uh, for always uh, being a great advocate uh, for agriculture and his leadership uh, in this industry, uh, not only in the state, but also across the nation. He's been an ally in livestock expansion, ethanol development, and a proponent of international trade. It's no coincidence that Nebraska is known as the Cornhusker State. The corn industry is a major economic driver of our state and has long been that. Our farmers have always been positive and are great stewards of the land, focusing on sustainability and continuing to grow more with less. Less land, less water, uh, less inputs. In 2021, as the governor mentioned, Nebraska grew more corn than ever before, well over 1.8 billion bushels. More than 99% of the corn in Nebraska is, is field grade corn, so it's not sweet corn. This is typically fed to livestock or processed into ethanol. Fittingly, Nebraska ranks second in commercial red meat production, all cattle on calves, all cattle on feed, and ethanol production. In fact, these three industries together, corn, livestock, and ethanol, are commonly known as the Golden Triangle. No state is better situated with corn, livestock, and ethanol than Nebraska is. The proximity of these industries provides our state with a synergistic and competitive advantage as we're able to easily transport our corn to cattle operations, as well as ethanol plants across the state to produce value-added foods, fuels, and fiber for a growing world. Farmers by nature are problem solvers. Agriculture is sometimes portrayed as a problem, when in actuality, we're a great solution. During a time of discussions that are happening around climate change and carbon emissions, we have a unique story to tell. As we look at sustainability, since 1980, farmers have decreased the amount of land required to produce a corn by 41%. We've also reduced soil loss by 58%. We've decreased irrigation water per bushel by 46%, and we've also improved the energy use efficiency by 41% on that same bushel. We've also reduced greenhouse gas emissions by 31% as well. In our agriculture, we don't rest on our laurels, but we identify opportunities and strive to continuously improve. For example, we know by using ethanol, we can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 43% compared to regular gasoline. Our corn organizations are actively working to pursue higher blends available to, to you, the public, as well as ourselves, not only in this state, but also in the country and around the world. Biofuels such as ethanol are domestically produced and can be a great step forward in becoming energy independent. As a farmer, I'm proud of our accomplishments. Agriculture is the backbone of our economy, with one out of every four jobs relating to agriculture within our state. I want people of all ages to be involved in agriculture, uh, in farming and ranching, and feel empowered that we need to celebrate these individuals, not only during Ag Week, but also the entire year round. So thank you, Governor Ricketts, for, for hosting us today. Thank you to all the hardworking farmers and ranchers uh, with your passionate uh, uh, experiences throughout the state. And with that, I'd like to wish you all happy Ag Week. And I'll turn it over to Ken with Nebraska Cattlemen. Hello, uh, my name is Ken Hers. I'm past president of Nebraska Cattlemen. I am standing in for Brenda Moshek, uh, who cannot be here today. Brenda runs a cow-calf operation in the Sand Hills in uh, Cherry County. Uh, she's right in the middle of calving right now, and she couldn't get away. But I have to tell you, I, it's a privilege for me to belong to ag production, whether it's from, as we say in, in Nebraska Cattlemen, from pasture to, to plate. It's a, it's a real pleasure for me to be involved in this industry, the, seeing the commitment of everybody such as Brenda, who has, uh, who is dedicated to the job she does, who puts priorities in actual food production over anything else. And so it's a real honor for me to <clears throat> read to you, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a statement from Brenda. Nebraska is the beef state. While agriculture is the number one industry in Nebraska, the beef cattle sector represents the largest segment of the industry. 
It's the engine that powers the state's economy with over 6.5 billion in cattle sales each year. In short, the beef cattle industry has an unmistakable impact on all Nebraskans. Uh, cattlemen take great pride in the way they care for their animals. <clears throat> the beef cattle community has a long-standing commitment to caring for their animals and providing families <clears throat> excuse me, with safe, highest quality beef possible. For beef farmers and ranchers, that means using modern techniques to raise cattle under optimum environmental and economic conditions. For consumers, it means knowing the beef they buy is wholesome and delicious. As Governor Ruckett says, cattlemen are the original uh, conservationists. Nebraska's cattle industry already produces the most sustainable beef in the world through decades of improvement and innovation. In fact, the beef cattle industry has a car carbon footprint 10 to 50 times lower than other regions in the world. And according to the Environmental Protection Agency, greenhouse gas from the uh, beef cattle only represent 2% of greenhouse gas emissions in the, in the United States. Every food has a carbon imprint, so it's important to consider diets holistically, looking at all costs and benefits of a food source. Cattle expand the land available for human food, uh, food production and do so while coexisting with natural ecosystems and creating more protein that, than would exist without them. Plus, beef cattle play an important role in maintaining soil health and mitigating the risk of wildfires. <clears throat> At a time when environmental sustainability is top of mind for many consumers, it's important to note sustainability is also at the top of mind for beef cattle producers. Cattlemen are also committed to reaching the next generation of beef consumers. The Nebraska Beef uh, in Schools program was developed in 2014 to enhance the relationship between local farmers and ranchers and their communities through students in their K-12 schools and beyond. This is, an also, this is also an opportunity for producers and local businesses to give back to the community by promoting locally raised and processed beef into school lunch programs, as well as connecting with members of the community through targeted agricultural programming. Currently, the Beef in Schools program is in over 50 school districts. With the work of the program now enhanced by the work of the Farm to School Act, signed into law by Governor Ricketts in 2021 to re reach even more students. Thank you, Governor Ricketts, for your continued dedication to Nebraska's beef cattle industry. And remember, enjoy some beef today and every day. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much, Ken. Ken, you'll be very pleased to know that uh, for lunch on Saturday, dinner Saturday night, and dinner last night, I had steak. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, uh, you know, Mark, you were talking about um, uh, number one or number three for total ag receipts. Uh, a little factoid for you all. Nebraska's ag receipts are more than Florida, New York, and Colorado's combined. That's how big we are. And in fact, not only are we third overall with regard to ag receipts on a per capita basis, we're number one, right? So, now, uh, can I, you know, Andy threw out the whole thing there about... Um, uh, the, our official moniker being the Cornhusker State, but you didn't say anything about the unofficial one being the Beef State there. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not starting to fight here, am I? No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Great. Well, uh, we'll go ahead and get the proclamation signed to officially proclaim us Ag Week here in Nebraska. And in fact, I'm going to sign one for each of you. as well as Steve Wellman, so you can take one back, so bear with me a moment. Stephanie, you're going to get one a little bit later. <laughs> and one for you. 
So we are officially proclaimed Ag Week here in Nebraska.